production is to lower one track by the action of a separate track. In this example, which I already set up to save some time, I have the kick track and the guitar track. The kick is going to be the triggering track, which means every time there is a kick, the guitar is going to be lowered. So, to first thing you need to do is make sure that you duplicate the triggering track, which can be done by either right clicking on it, scrolling down to duplicate, or once the correct track is selected, go up to the track window, scroll down to duplicate. Alright, so once that's taken care of, you're going to want to open up a gate with inside the duplicated track. And now, don't worry about making this sound pretty. The statue is not going to be heard at all in the final mix. It's just to make sure that there's no bleed or to get rid of as much bleed as you possibly can. And also, to set it to a reasonable frequency that generally lives within, within whatever instrument you're sending. Okay, so once let's just give that a listen. That sounds like it's going to suit our needs just fine. So you can close out of that. Now you're going to want to set an output. I chose bus 1. However, whatever bus that is not in use at the moment is will work just fine. That doesn't make a difference. I just used bus 1. And now open a compression plugin into the other track. So now you're going to want to uh, turn on the side chain, which is done by clicking the um, key button right here. And um, then you want to send a key, you want to turn on the key input by putting on whatever bus you used in the previous track. So I have selected bus 1 right there. This button right here is is also important. It's to make sure that the uh, duplicated track is coming through on the side chain. Once you have this selected, it's always going to play that as long as it's coming through. We can hear it, which means it just came through just fine, but we don't want to hear that anymore. So deselect that. And now, now you use the compression as you would any other any other time. The threshold is going to be in decibels where the guitar starts to be affected by the compression any time any time that there is a kick. Okay, and now now the ratio is any time it goes above that threshold, how much does it lower? Right now, it's not, I don't have it set too high. It's, it's not set that high at the moment. I have it at 3.01, which means any time it goes over the threshold by one decibel, it'll get lowered by three decibels. You can raise it, lower it, whatever, whatever you want. Obviously the same thing with the threshold or any other knob. Now let's give this a listen. As you can see it's being lowered any time that the um that there is a kick. You're not hearing the kick anymore, so now I'm gonna solo the original kick. And as you can tell it's being lowered. The ratio chooses how much, as you can see physically on the screen, and that that is ducking. And now there, there's a there's another cool feature I want to show you show you really quickly. It's not used that often, but it can also give you like a pretty neat and interesting sound. It's kind of funky. So what you want to do is instead of using the compression, try using try using a gate with inside inside the guitar track or whatever whatever track you're using. You want to do the same thing. It works the same way. Turn on bus 1 or whatever bus you're using on the key input. You want to turn the side chain on and once again this will let you hear the kick or whatever your triggering track is. Except this does it kind of the opposite way. Now since it's a gate it will only It'll only play the guitar every time there is a kick. And you can obviously change it, the sound however you want. 
change the ratio and that that can give you some real interesting sounds trying to do with a vocal track or whatever whatever have you so I use that often but if you want something funky and something interesting and different that's a fun fun little ideal to mess around with I hope you enjoyed it take care